Hello everyone, my name is Matthew Fraley, founder of BreakpointTrades.com. We founded it back in 2003, over 20 years ago, to provide advanced technical analysis, market commentary, trade ideas, and advanced mechanical trading algorithms, such as our 21 SPY and ES mean reversion systems. By the way, one of those just triggered a short, the exhaustion short, I'll talk about that shortly. And of course, our amazing KISS systems, which we're gonna be launching a major update. Today, for example, New smart trailing stops were generated for the S&P 500, the DIA, GDX, SPY, and SSO. You can see those trades are up very nicely. SSO is up 41% from its entry on November 11th. You can see awesome gains here. NVIDIA system went long a while back, and it's up 81% with a current stop at 811. You should take advantage of these systems. They're on breakpoint trades if you're not a subscriber. Anyway, back to this newsletter at hand. It is Wednesday, March 27th, an evening. This is our back end recorder for our standard website, web page newsletter. And I'm going to go and get that recording started right now. Hello, everyone. This is Matthew Fraley with BreakpointTrades.com. This is the Wednesday, March 27th newsletter. Hope everyone's had a good week so far. As you know, it's a shortened holiday week. The U.S. markets are closed on Friday for Good Friday. So hopefully you guys have some plans. I know my wife, kids are going up to Chicago and I'll probably be going up with them, the family. Anyway, even though the markets closed on Friday, remember the February PCE inflation data will be released. And of course, that could be an interesting one. But the markets will be closed, so we'll see, you know, does the market forget about it by the time Sunday or futures open or Monday? We'll see. But again, the market's going to be closed for that data. Now, as far as the market, again, is this newsletter? It's divided into six major sections. And again, as you know, on the market, it had a slight pullback from late last week, but we've been once again favoring the pullback to be bought. And we saw that late today with the afternoon push. That said, clearly the market is getting choppier. There's clear distribution going on. Big boys, you know, selling positions to the public. And if, especially if we make another high, we think it's going to be a pretty good shorting opportunity. It's definitely overdue. But, um, and also today, the actually a couple days ago, one of our mean reversion systems finally triggered a trade. None of the mean reversion long systems have taken any trades for quite a long time because, you know, they look for pullbacks and uptrends and the market has been so damn strong. None of those have triggered, but we actually, one of our uh, short systems triggered, it's called the exhaustion short. And that name should be pretty self-explanatory. It's after in a very, very extended move. And that trade is actually very rare. I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. Some other things, the economic news, like I said, Friday, we have the PCE inflation data when the market's closed. How I think also speaks on Friday. Tomorrow, Thursday, we have the typical initial jobless claims, GDP, third estimate, Chicago PMI, that'll be looked at, housing data, natural gas inventories. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So first off, some admin stuff. So this image below, this is the SPY exhaustion short too. Now it actually triggered late last week and I didn't see it, but I issued that trade today. And uh, you can see the market did pull back from that short condition, but it's still technically open. Again, it's called the exhaustion short. Again, it's very self-explanatory. These are very rare to trigger. They only trigger after an extended move, say, for example, prices, you know, had so many days above a moving average, you know, such as 100 days above the 20 day moving average, something like that. I mean, it's a difficult, rare condition to occur. In fact, um, this conditions only occurred nine times out of 28 years, um, but it did trigger. And I do think it will play out. Not gonna, gonna, it's possible we could see a second entry on it, especially if we make another slight high. Next. Here's some examples of the past exhaustion 
shorts that triggered on SPY. Again, sometimes they occur, occur near a major top, like you see here. This was 2018. That was a pretty good short. But a lot of times also they can occur right in the middle of a trend. Very short term. They typically close out below a short term moving average. Again, they're very highly profitable. In fact, this system has 100% winning trades. Again, there's not a lot of data, but so far it's been 100% winning trades. Here's an example where the system took a short and then you made another high and it took a second entry. Perhaps we'll see something like that this time. Next, image number four. Here's the statistics to the SPY exhaustion short too. So as you can see here, there's only been nine trades since 1995. That's how far the SPY data goes back for this system. So it's only triggered nine times, 100% winning trades. And uh, typical hold time is about six to seven days. So not a lot. Again, it's pretty short term. And it's called the SPY exhaustion short two because there's an ex SPY exhaustion short one and that hasn't triggered. But you know, one of the exhaustion shorts did trigger. Next, moving on, talk about the KISS systems here. So as you know, I've been talking about these. We're adding that premium section with the high performance versions. And also we added SMS. Now we haven't made that live yet, but it works. I tested that today. So that's gonna be great because you'll also be able to receive SMS text messages whenever one of your KISS system, systems that you set as a favorite has a change. There's a new entry, there's a new stop, and you can get alerted on your phone. Currently you get alerted in your email. You can see today, for example, we had new smart trailing stops generated on the S&P 500 cash, on the DIA, GDX, SPY, and SSO. All these trades are up very nicely. Next, back to the general market. So item number six shows the index sector table what transpired today and this week. So you can see again, major indexes closed up nicely today. The NASDAQ tech area actually lagging a bit. The Russell really rallied up 2.2%. The Dow was up 1.2%. For the week, we have a bifurcation, meaning, you know, the, half the indexes are up and, of course, the NASDAQ is down. Currency or sector-wise, out of the 21 market sectors, broad-based rally here today. All 21 sectors were up. And for the week here, we only have three sectors that are slightly down about a half percent or less. Currency-wise, U.S. dollar up 0.07% today, down 0.1% for the week. Cryptocurrencies, been pulling back here a little bit. Ethereum's interesting, kind of has a potential lower high away of being. I'll talk about that in a minute. You know, a lot, some of the crypto stocks, such as MSTR and CLSK, continue to make new highs. As far as the commodities today, mostly to the downside. Again, the index is only down slightly, 0.1%, barely down for the week. Crude oil down a tad, 0.3%, but still up 0.9% for the week. Natural gas down yet again. Remember, natural gas inventories tomorrow, it's down 5% for the week so far. Agriculture just continues to be absolutely on fire. Um, another commodity that's been on fire is coca. And I'll talk about that shortly. Precious metals, uh, we're up again today. Gold, silver, GDX, the miners especially. Again, given the backdrop of everything and all this fiat money and all the debt spending and you know trillions of dollars and 34, 35 trillion in deficit, is it really a surprise? I mean, come on. And uh, as far as the bond market, we saw a drop in the 10 and 30 year treasury yields. Next. Item number seven shows the economic news calendar. As I already stated, tomorrow, Thursday, you have initial jobless claims, GDP, third estimate, um, Chicago PMI, Michigan sentiment, pending home sales, natural gas inventories. And on Friday, we have that PCE inflation data. Remember, the market's closed. All right, jumping into the index charts. First chart below, item number eight is the weekly snapshot of the major indexes. Like I said, a couple weeks ago, we bounced off these nine week EMA, that's your support on the weekly time frame. We just continue to ride that up for now. Hell of a rally from the October, late October lows. It's been one of the strongest rallies, quite honestly. Next. 
Trevor at nine, here's the Dow Jones. Again, after pulling back off that upper channel line late last week, pulled into the nine day exponential move on average, bounced off of it. Again, it's still in its uptrend channel. Obviously no changes. We have the 60 stochastics in an embedded area still above 80%. We do have a MACD divergence building, but remember divergence is not a sell signal on its own. You need another trigger. Next, Trevor 10, here's the daily S&P. Again, like a broken record, no changes in the trend. We remain in this uptrend channel. The channel line and the 20 day moving average are your major support. Again, no changes yet. I do think if we get another high here, guys, I would start getting a lot more cautious. I think we're getting close to some sort of pullback maybe in maybe the following week, April sometime. Next, Trevor 11, here's the S&P with that uh, system chart. Now this is one of the mean reversion systems, guys. And I've been talking about this and it's a very effective system. Again, it's not something you can use all the time. You know, you can use this when markets are in these momentum uptrend conditions like we've had. Again, so what the condition is when the 60 link stochastic is embedded above 80 percent like i show here you use some of these fast indicators like a two length rsi williams percent five length fast stochastics four length so whenever they get oversold and i have them marked here in the boxes but the 60 stochastics remains embedded above 80 that gives you an objective mean reversion long buy signal you can see all these signals we've had 10 of them that have occurred since that uh, December, early December. And we had one that occurred yesterday, guys. You can see the fast stochastics got oversold, as did the two length RSI. And, you know, the S&P was up 45 points today. So that was an excellent long trade once again. Now, this system doesn't tell you when to exit. You know, you have to figure that out on your own, whether you just hold for a couple days or whatever is your prerogative, but it gives you the entries and it's very effective. And that's what we do a lot at Breakpoint Trades. We actually give you some of these tools. So if you're looking at our web, web page newsletters, you can take, we give you the live chart to the link to this chart. So you can bookmark it and check it anytime you want. Okay. Again, very easy system. It's given a lot of great trades here. Next. Trevor 12, here's the KISS system. For the S&P 500, obviously no changes. Smart trailing stop still remains at 5080. System went long back on October 31st. A few days off the lows. Very good entry by the system. And it has its profit protected very nicely. That's the beauty of the systems. So many people out there just buy. They get a great entry, but they have no exit plan, no insurance. And that's the nice thing about the system. It gives you that insurance protection. Chopper 13, here's the four time frames with these custom indicators. Again, first off, foremost, the ATR is supported in all these time frames daily, half day, 130 minute, and uh, 78 minute. You can see on 130 minute, you know, and the 78 minute, we pulled back from the DeMarc 9 and 13. You can see we bounced right off that ATR essentially and the support cycle. Next, Chopper 14, here's a Two hour view, just a very nice clean channel. Love this channel. And the moving average ribbon. Again, moving average ribbon, whenever they pinch, that tends to be good buying opportunity as well from the bullish configuration. Remember, a couple weeks ago, we were talking about the coil pattern. We favored an upside break, which we got. And we're favoring, we've been favoring yet another upside move. We're, we got that late today. We'll see if we can get one more high here, taking out that high. Again, otherwise, the channel is your support. Trevor 15, here's a 30 minute chart. You can see the, the coil here, breakout, some sort of wave three, pullback, wave four, and likely we're now moving up in the five. Now, one thing I'll make a comment on, and don't get bogged down by this, this is a wave four pullback, it's quite long. I'm wondering if this is more like a wave B, and this is a C up. We'll see, either way, we're looking to see if we can get one more high. Next. Chopper 16, here's the triple Qs. Again, no changes. They, they are lagging though, guys. I mean, they are 
you know, they're still holding up, but they are lagging relative. So just something to be aware of. Otherwise, your major supports remain intact. Covered 17, here's the weekly view. Like I said, no changes here. Once we get it confirmed into this current trend, we're viewing it as a wave three of five, and then we think we're going to have a deeper wave four pullback. Again, won't end the bull market. It'll be a buying opportunity, but that could be a nice pullback. Next. Jabber 18, here's the triple Q's TIS system. Again, no changes. Smart trailing stop still remains at 427.70. Should we get another pop here? I think we'll see these stops jump up nicely. I'd like to see that. System has done excellent here. Jabber 19, here's the four time frames. Again, and quite interestingly, you can see how the Q's have been lagging. So on the S&P, the Q's on the 130 minute broke through those cycles. Here, they're still ping ponging between them. Next, Jabber 20, here's a half day chart. Again, shows you the nice clean channel. We bounced off that demand zone the other day. We're still in the channel. We'll see if we can still get one more push up here or not. Next, just following up on a few of these big name stocks. Jabber 21, here's NVIDIA. So NVIDIA has been weakening here now. Someone asked me, could that... Last high have been a little double top. It's possible that it's a double top. A Remember, we've had this labeled as a wave five. This would essentially be a truncated wave five. That's where it makes a very minor lower high, but it's still a wave five. We'll see. Clearly, the 200 day, the 20 day moving average here is your support. We'll see if that holds or not, but this is definitely looking a little more precarious now. Next. Jabber 22, here's Amazon, still holding the same pattern here, still in an uptrend, it's kind of wedging though. Jabber 23, here's Meta, still holding up as well, but pulling back, still holding the trend line for now. Jabber 24, here's Microsoft, remember I had this labeled as a fifth wave, so remains still not confirmed that that fifth wave high is com completely in now, but it's possible. Here's an uptrend line from the September lows. That's something to monitor as well on a nice, on a deeper pullback. Number 25, here's Google. That's rallying nicely off that 200-day moving average. It's back near those January highs, so be aware of that. And Chapter 26, Apple finally bounced today. As you know, it's been very weak. Um, so we'll see what this does over time. Next. Finally, we're going to talk about the Russell 2000. Big move up in here, up 2.2% today. We drew this rising wedge a while back, and that appears to be the pattern playing out. It still has room to move up in that wedge, but once this wedge ends, we may look at a pretty good, you know, this could offer a pretty good short once this finally breaks down. But for now, it's still within the pattern. Next, so that does it for the major indexes, guys. A couple of indicators. Here's the VIX. VIX bounced, you know, off that Bollinger Bands from late last week, pulling back again. Really nothing to say at this time. Next, number 29, here's the NYSI 9 EMA crossover system. As I've been stating, this has been an excellent system. It's still on that original buy signal from that early November cross and confirmation on the price candle. So it never gave a confirmed sell signal back here. So it's still on that original buy signal. But I do think the next time this crosses below the 90 EMA, it could be an excellent trigger for a short or a pullback. So that's we're continuing to watch. Next, moving on to bonds, Chapter 30, here's high yield corporate, still holding up, bouncing back again. Remember, the markets and high yield corporate tend to move together. Chapter 31, here's the 10-year Treasury yield still in this little channel pattern, pulled back, rates pulled back a little bit today. That helped the market. Chapter 32, TLT 20-year bonds. Remember, they move opposite of rates, bouncing up again, still in the channel. You see how they're basically inverse to one another, both in channel patterns. Next, look at a few market sectors. Here's healthcare. I've been showing this coil. I've been mentioning this as a possible fifth wave or fourth wave coil. Finally broke out today. I still favor this going up a bit higher. But that next high could form a fifth wave, diver fifth wave divergence. Next, Chapter 34, XOC communications sector, obviously still holding up 
as is tech. Some other sectors, here's financials. Pulled back the other day off that wedge pattern. It's, again, it's a very steep wedge. Realize that, but bouncing back again. Still within the pattern for now. Chapter 36, energy pulled back yesterday, but bounced right again today. This area has been super strong. Moving average ribbons getting a bit wide here. Like I stated the other day, we did get that one day pullback anyway, but this area has been strong, guys. Chapter 37, here's the bullish percent energy index. Again, it's up here around 87%. Excellent buy signal back here that worked out. A couple of individual names. Here's ExxonMobil. It's a steady eddy, especially if you bought back here in January. Just continues to move up. Very nice trade. And Chapter 39, Valero Energy. Again, guys, a lot of these energy stocks have done well. I'm just showing a couple that have been on the watch list. Beautiful move out of this cup and handle pattern. Pulled back recently to the 9 EMA. I remember I warned about that wide move and average ribbon. It's still very wide, quite honestly. I'm wondering, can it get another pop off of here? Maybe like a bull flag. We'll see. But still holding up. Moving on to commodities. Chapter 40 here is DBC. That's the weekly view, again, which is essentially flat for the week. It's in a weekly coil pattern. Chapter 41, crude oil. Still in this potential rising wedge pattern. Again, even though crude looks a little, you know, kind of warning here with this wedge, the energy stocks have been very strong. Uh, one trigger you could watch for a potential short if this wedge breaks is also a break of this RSI uptrend line. Chapter 42, natural gas just continues to leak oil. They call it the widow maker. It's notoriously difficult to trade. Slightly taken out that recent low. Remember, natural gas inventory is on Thursday. Chapter 43, copper. So far for the week, down 0.2%. Remember, it broke out a couple weeks ago from that coil pattern. Chapter 44, DBA Agriculture, up, up, and away. This cup and handle pattern that I put out in January has played out fantastic. Man, that was an excellent trade. Congrats if you took that puppy. Here's the daily. The daily had a nice coil here, which was your trigger. Yet you another kind of a flag pattern here in early March, which played out. Got It's getting very extended. Pulled back yesterday, but man, bouncing again today. Next, Chapter 46. Coca, look at this absolute parabolic move in this puppy. You don't think inflation's a problem, guys? I think it's going to be a real problem. And I'm kind of wondering if Powell may eventually have, or the Fed have to kind of redig some of their potential rate cuts they've mentioned for late in the year. We'll see. Chapter 47, uranium ETF. Remember, bounced off this demand zone. It's been struggling right around this 50-day moving average and able to really close well above it. But still holding in here for now. Chapter 48, CCJ. That's the major uranium stock. It has the same look here. Been stalling with the 50-day moving average. You had a nice long entry off that 200-day moving average, which I took. It's still holding in here. If you want a tight stop, you could probably put it just below that 4130 area. Next, driver 49, Bitcoin. Again, after the pullback last week, bouncing. Still not back to the highs yet. Okay. Next, driver 50, Bitcoin on the weekly. Again, I'm viewing this move up. This powerful move is a wave three of some sort. Once it ends, I'm looking for a wave four. But ultimately, guys, I do think Bitcoin eventually goes up at least to that 100,000 mark. Driver 51, Ethereum, as I mentioned in the opening comments, Ethereum looks more vulnerable to me. And at sell-off, it's stalling at this declining 20-day moving average. Kind of looks like an A, B, where this is a B lower high, and then we get another move down or a coil of some sort. Some of the crypto stocks, MSTR has just been an absolute monster. Up yet again today, but again, it is getting a bit tired. Couple black candle dojis here. Hell of a buy signal off that 20 day moving average a couple weeks ago. Hell of a buy signal off that 530 area where I put it on our watch list. Again, it is starting to diverge here. Look at the RSI, look at the MACD. Chapter 53, CLSK. Remember, we put this out on the weekend. Nice pop out of this uh, coil pattern we favored. A little bit down today. And one to watch if this area still pops is Riot. 
I don't like it fundamentally, but on the 60 minute chart, you have kind of an inverse head and shoulder look to it. So something to watch. Next. Trevor 55 US dollar was up today and it's up here a little bit this evening. So as a result, gold has pulled back some. Trevor 56, Japanese yen, still in this descending triangle pattern. Ultimately, these are bearish patterns, but sometimes they, they build a base and break out. And whenever they break out, they're actually produce stronger moves. So something to think about. That all. Next, Jabber 57, here's the tradable ETF, FXY, same pattern. I actually took a little long today in this, and I have a stop. I figured, why not? I got a tight stop. If I'm wrong, I don't lose much. Got a little maybe capitulatory volume there. Moving on to precious metals, here's gold. Up 0.6% today. The GDX daily ratio, the stocks continue to outperform. We do have a little RSI divergence still, though, so you have to be aware of that and a little bit of MACD divergence. Unless this just gets blown out. Driver 59, here's the another daily view, just a little more zoomed in. Again, we do have this divergence just to be aware of, guys. We had a nice pop today, but we still haven't taken out those that recent spike high. Driver 60, here's the two-hour view of the ETF GLD. Again, we haven't taken out that high, so it's still possible that was the wave five, and we're forming a lower high here. The more bullish view would be that wave five hasn't been put in yet, and this is wave one, two, and we're going to work on a three. But if this is a wave three, it needs to start powering. Okay, Right now, it's just been kind of meandering up. Moving on, here's silver. Again, remember, silver's in this nice, big, bullish triangle pattern. Driver 62, there's the monthly chart, this four-year coil pattern. I Again, I love this chart. I think once it breaks out of here, I think silver could re-attack the, you know, the highs back from 2012 and 2011. Could be a major swing trade that you can hold, but it's still within the pattern. Just looking at some individuals, here's AG. I mentioned this the other day. It's a silver stock. It's had one hell of a correction over the last couple of years, but it is in a wedge pattern here, looking a little bit more interesting, especially if silver eventually breaks out. Driver 64, CDE, that was another one I mentioned. It's got a nice base that it's built on the weekly. Oh, Driver 65, here's GDX on the weekly. It's rallied off the lower portion of that coil. It's now at the top line. This is potentially resistance where it could pull back. But eventually, if this breaks out of here, man, this area could really go. Driver 66, here's the daily. Again, big pop today. It's been consolidating recently. And GDX looks better than gold. Not as, not as good a divergence here on it. Nice pop. The ratio continues leading. Remember, it's always best to see the stocks leading relative to gold. Excellent buy signal back here off this channel break and trend line breaks in the RSI and ratio. So if you're still in that, there's a major swing. You're still in good shape. Driver 67, here's the 60-minute chart. We had this little coil we popped out of it today. Driver 68, here's the BP GDM. Excellent buy signal, as you know, back in late February. It popped up a little bit today. It's now at 42.86, still a long way from the overbought territory. It's been, this is an excellent system. Not perfect, nothing is, but it's been giving you nice, clean triggers off these Rinko parabolic SAR reversals. It's based on a one box size, so basically 1%. Remember, Rinko, bullish percent charts can go from 0 to 100%. They're normalized to that. Few individual names, Charber 69, AGI, it's a gold play. It was had a bull flag, major pop today. Look at that volume. Look at that move. Awesome. Charber 70, RGLD, big pop. Look at that move. Up 8% today. Hell of a move. Remember, we showed it bouncing off this demand zone in late February. Pulled back, formed a bull flag. Hell of a move. One I mentioned on the weekend was this MTA. You know, you have this long, this area, which has been long-term support going back to 2017. And this week so far, we're up 3.4% 3, 3 if you bought that on Monday. Driver 72, here's the daily. You have basically a bull kind of pennant setting up, a little coil. 
February 73, gold, Barrett gold, nice pop today. Remember I showed this inverse head and shoulder pattern on the weekend. It's now testing the neckline. Great volume patterns. February 74, Newmont, also kind of an inverse head and shoulder pattern look. Bouncing today, it's still below its neckline. February 75, AU, was an excellent trade out of this cold of the supply zone. Cold back, found support at the 20-day moving average, still holding up there. So congrats if you've been, if you got into these precious metal plays, they've done very well. We'll move on to the final tr charts here. So here's swim. Remember, this is a long idea of mine from last week. It basically swam up past my targets. <laughs> Sorry for the bad pun. Your trigger was 350. Hell of a percentage move. Trevor 77 CENX was one I mentioned on the weekend as a momentum, it's an aluminum stock. Very nice rally this week. Nice day today. Trevor 78 SPRY was a long idea I put out on Monday and had a Beautiful pop out of there. Congrats if you took that. It was a nice, easy trade over that 940 area. Chapter 79, AAP, Advanced Auto Parts. Still my swing trade from back in February out of this channel. And then potential inverse head and shoulder pattern. Still holding up well. Chapter 80, W-Day. Remember, it's been on the short list. You know, trigger today short. If you're short, put a stop in place. Maybe just above that recent little lower high there. Driver 81, ADI was a long idea I put out on Monday or on the weekend and pulled all the way back to that uptrend line and bounced off of it. I mentioned that as a supporter where you can take a lower risk long with a tight stop. I'm not adding any new long ideas tonight, guys. Again, tomorrow's the last day of the trading market. So anyway, we'll look, continue to look at some of these inverse ETFs. Again, we're just continuing to monitor these SPXU. Like I said, they haven't triggered. They're still in their downtrend channels but we will continue to monitor them eventually they will trigger number 83 there's the two hour view you did get an objective buy off that little channel but you needed to take profits number 84 here's sqqq same deal still in its pattern and the final one fngd that's the inverse etf for the uh, fang stocks now this one's more interesting to me. It's in it's been forming a base. It's not in this downtrend like the others. So this one is interesting to me. I own a little bit of it still, but not in it heavy yet. All right, guys, that'll do it. Again, appreciate all the support. I hope everyone has a nice holiday weekend and take care.